Hi guys, my name is Natalie with Central Arkansas Library System and we have another amazing guest today. Um, her name is Dr. Sarah Stoneberg and she is from Ohio and she is a veterinarian at the zoo, which of course very well fits in with our summer reading theme, Tales and Tales. So hi Miss Sarah, welcome, welcome. We're so glad for you to join us. Um, what do you like best about being a veterinarian? I like being about, I get to see animals every day. And so that's always fun. And being at the zoo, I never know what animal I get to work with. So I get to see, which really appropriately goes with my book, oodles of animals every day. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite one or at least a favorite animal at the zoo? Um, I like working with big cats and uh, great apes. So our cheetahs and our tigers and our lions and our jaguars. And then we also have orangutans chips and gorillas so I get to work with all of them. I'm jealous like I feel like the library needs some animals to be honest <laughs> um, but I'm sure we have some complaints about that especially with allergies but so what book do you have for us today? So I will be reading Oodles of Animals by Lewis Elkhart, Elert and so <laughs> as I said hopefully it goes with my job because I get to work with Oodles of Animals. That's amazing. Um, how did you become a vet? Like, did you always want to work with animals as a kid or? Yeah, so I was a little kid that always wanted to go to zoos. I, anytime we went on vacation, I made sure I looked up where the closest zoo was so that we could go. So I've always had a love of animals and it kind of just progressed to me wanting to be a veterinarian and care for them and make sure they get a good, healthy life. That's really awesome. Um, well, thank you again for being here, and I can't wait to hear this. So, oodles of animals. Caterpillar. A caterpillar's future plan includes a butterfly wingspan. Butterflies and moths fly free. They don't need a suitcase or ID. Fly wings are angelic things. A fly can flee, a flea can't fly, but a flea can flee and a fly can fly. Flies on a log might be lunch for a frog. Bumblebee don't start a rumble with a bumblebee or disgruntled it will be. Dragonflies are fond of a peaceful pond. Mosquito bites, it gets plump. All I get is one big bump. When moths fly at night, they like porch lights. Bugs, ugly bugs, don't get hugs. Oh, poor ugly bugs. <laughs> A newt looks cute in its polka dot suit. The shy salamander waits for dark to meander. A toad is happy to be hoppy. Frog in a bog, a frog will well until he sees a fly to swallow. Sharing trails with a snake can be a mistake. Iguanas don't want you in their face. They prefer to have their own space. A gecko climbs on sticky toes that cling to things and don't let go. Swimming and sunning, a crocodile's happy, but when he meets humans, he tends to get snappy. <laughs> Starfish don't shine, they cannot, and seahorses don't gallop or trot. A crab gets crabby if you get grabby. If you bother a lobster, it's a cinch, it will pinch. Shrimp ought to be taught not to get caught. Young fish families have some rules. Look out for the hooks and stay in the school. Stingray, stay away. Don't swim with sharks. Quick, head for the shore or you won't be swimming anymore. <laughs> when a rooster crows, cock a doodle doo, does he wake up the other roosters too? If a chicken crossed the road and rambled, would the eggs she laid be scrambled? 
Cardinals are cheery when days are dreary. In his pouch, that's where the fish is, so a pelican eat whenever he wishes. A serene swan silently floats, webby cattle her downy boat. A duck lays down its sleepy head upon its breast, a feather bed. Penguins know from birth their wings won't fly from earth. Boy and girl flamingos think mom's favorite color must be pink. If a cat nips at his tail, a mouse better run, or he'll be fast food served up for one. Greedy squirrels speed on a bird beater see. Opossum tails are bare, there's no hair there. Leave a rat where it's at. Porcupine quills click, to you they will stick. A back frown is a smile upside down. In a black mask, he steals food we don't want from a garbage can, a raccoon's restaurant. If their tails raise, give a skunk room unless you like PU perfume. <laughs> Dressed in fur and socks, a fox trots. Handsome from head to tail, he likes himself a lot. Beaver teeth work like a sharp saw. When they find a tree, they gnaw and gnaw and gnaw. A cat is a purr wrapped up in fur. It's a rabbit's habitat to choose fresh veggies when she chews. A hamster has soft fur, but there's no purr in her. A hedgehog is prickly and small in size, like a pincushion with two beady eyes. If you eat like a pig, sooner or later, you will become big. A wolf downs his food in a hurry. If you hear him howl, walk backward and worry. A dog's a true friend with damp nose to tail's end. Leopard and lion paws hide sharp claws. A dolphin day begins with roots and spins. A seal swims quicker when wet and slipper. Walrus skin is rubbery and tusk rests on belly blubbery. Be sure you know where and how before you try to milk a cow. When llamas get a haircut, they will look quite naked, but you can knit a sweater using their wool to make it. A goat must trust his hooks to climb to the right spot because falling down a mountain, that would hurt a lot. How do buffalo know which way to roam? Do they look at a map before they leave home? If an elephant wants to dance, say no. You'd have flat foot if she stepped on your toe. If you go out walking and see a bear, tell your feet to get out of there. Don't argue with an ape, he's a brawny bruiser. You might think you're clever, but you'll be the loser. If you take a monkey to lunch, feed him bananas and make it a bunch. Furry hips, big ears and lips, a chimp looks rather zany, but inside between those ears, a chimpanzee is brainsy. And that is the end of Oodles and Animals. Wonderful. Um, I was curious, do you have, is there an animal at the zoo that's like the most difficult to deal with? Or like... So a lot of our animals are trained for medical behavior. So if you go to the doctor and you get blood draws, or if you go and get x-rays, some of our animals are actually trained to do that. And so it's super nice because it makes my job easy. Um, 
some of my animals don't like medications, especially monkeys and great apes. So we have to make special flavors for them. And that's probably the hardest thing is getting them to take their medicine because they don't understand that they need it. Um, other times my animals are asleep when I deal with them, so they don't even know I'm there. Um, but for the most part, it's just, you know, working with the animals to make them participate in their medical care. That's really awesome. Um, I didn't think about actually just having to change the flavors and stuff. Like I know the classic tree is just to slip it in their food or something like that, but um, well, they, are, really interesting. they are very good at finding it. <laughs> <laughs> They need, they need Flintstone vitamins. That's all, that's, they need some. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Is there any like cool animal fun facts that you love? What do you find interesting? And then I can tell you a story. I don't know. Well, you said you're, the big cats are your favorite. Do you have a favorite big cat story? Um, so I actually went to Africa and worked with cheetahs. Well, that's definitely a good introduction to a story. <laughs> actually worked over in Africa with the Cheetah Conservation Fund, which we do support here at the zoo. Um, and they are based in Namibia and we get to do a lot of work with cheetahs there and teaching people how to coexist with um, predators, um, especially the local people. And so that's a really cool thing that we get to do healthcare and conservation at the same time. So we get to preserve these animals in the wild and as well as bring it back here and teach people all the things they're doing over there. Well, that's impressive. Okay. <laughs> um, have you traveled anywhere else to learn about animals? Um, so I've been to South America as well. Um, and then those are the main areas. I've been, been to some lectures and stuff over in Europe, but nothing hands-on. That's so, that's so amazing. I, I would love to be able to do that someday. And I'm pretty sure our cute little viewers would love to maybe one day do that too. So that's really amazing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the zoo or any fun events coming up or? Um, so we obviously are open to the public and a lot of the animals that were in our book, you can come see here at the zoo. So if you want to see them closer, you can see them here. And I recommend coming out. It's very nice here to walk around and see all the animals. And um, we look forward to seeing everybody. Um, yeah, I just read that y'all are now on Thursdays open until nine. Right? Yeah, so through June, right now we're starting with, we're having Tales and Tunes on Thursdays. So you can actually come out and stay here till late at night and enjoy a little bit cooler weather than the midday. <laughs> well, that's definitely a plus. <laughs> um, that all sounds amazing. And um, thank you so much for being here. And well, thank you. Um, so for everybody, I hope you enjoyed that wonderful story and um, have dreams of Africa now that we know that Dr. Sarah has been there. <laughs> um, and of course, it's never too late to sign up for our summer reading program. If you have any, any questions about it, feel free to call your library, call the zoo about all their amazing events, um, or feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, and with our summer reading program, there's, of course, all kinds of fun prizes for free that you can win um, for all ages, kids, teens, and adults. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Dr. Sarah, and have a great day, guys. Bye.